He heard the sound of a numbered door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold, gave a cold electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left. No time to waste, guys. Let's get moving. Seven led the way down the hallway. Junpei and Clover followed him as fast as they could. After what seemed like far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hall. To the left of the wooden door, they found the dead. There was no time to rest or catch their breath. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel on the dead. Pan, 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 pan. Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> his smile seemed forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but <sighs> you never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some of the sweat from his head and his neck. Clover smirked at him. I would have thought a guy your size would have bigger balls than that. What? What the hell did you just say? <laughs> say it again, I dare you. You have no balls. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. <laughs> you fucking brat. All right, let's go. <laughs> hey, calm down, you guys. This isn't the time for uh, this. It's not going to do us any good. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Jinpei sighed. Sometimes he wondered if the doors and the puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Wait here for a minute, alright? I'm gonna go see if there's any other doors. They didn't respond, but Junpei wasn't in the mood for a conversation anyways. First, he examined the inner part of the numbered door. It was, of course, shut tight. On the left was a single short hallway that terminated almost immediately at a thick iron wall. Junpei doubted the wall could be moved. At last, he gave up and returned to Seven who is tapping lightly on the wooden door. At last, oh sorry, this door is the only option we got, right? Yeah, it looks like it. There was a metal plaque bolted above the door. It read, operating room. If it was to believe the room on the other side of the door was an operating room, something about it made Junpei feel nervous. Well, there's no point standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Seven grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. The creak of the hinge sounded like the groan of an old woman. A chill snaked its way down Junpei's spine. Quickly, he gathered what courage he could and took the first step into the room. Seven followed with Clover right behind him. Part of the room, just past the door, was obscured by a screen. Clover's curiosity got the better of her and she darted past Junpei to peer around the corner. Yeah! Her scream nearly blew Junpei's eardrums. He and Seven ran towards Clover to see what had frightened her. They rounded the screen, the cause of her outburst was immediately clear. What, what the hell is this? Is, is this a corpse? It was something that looked kind of like a human lying across some sort of bed. No, not a bed, an operating table. The table sat on a rusty steel lift and a cluster of bright operating lights shone down on it from the ceiling. Slowly, they approached. As they got closer to the body, it became clear that it wasn't a body at all. What the hell, it's just a huge doll or something. Uh, a doll? Clover did not look terribly comfort comforted. Slowly, she approached the operating table and looked as intense intently as possible from as far away as possible at the thing. Phew. Junpei could see her relax. You're right, it's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. She heaved a great sigh of relief and wiped a few drops of sweat from her forehead. Seven smirked. <laughs> well, I guess it would have been weird if you actually had any balls. Shut it! Don't you start with me, fatty. Oh, what's this? You want a piece of me, short stuff? Yeah, bring it on, you whale. Hey, you guys, not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. <laughs> Junpei sighed and shook his head. Anyway, it looks like he's got something the two of us could stand to have a little more of. I'm talking about a heart? Huh? Oh, this. You mean on his chest? Yeah. 
It was said a little higher than normal for a human body, but from the shape of the organ, it could be no doubt that it was a heart. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. You think maybe it's like a medical mannequin or something? Or maybe it's got more personal uses. Seven's grin was uh, more than a little perverted. Clover glared at him. Anyway, uh, how about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay, sure thing. All right, guys. I think uh, I'm gonna. God damn it, fine. I'll do this puzzle, and then as soon as I get out, I'm gonna stop. Okay, but I'll do. I will do this puzzle. Medical mannequin with his guts showing. Ew, gross. Hey Junpei, there's a slit in this thing's chest. Sure is. There's something in there, maybe we can get it out. Ugh, damn it. Sticking thing won't budge. It's stuck. Well, I guess you can't use force on this one then. We need something small that can fit into that little hole. She's supposed to make a penis joke there. That's sure a lot of surgery stuff. There's some scalpels, a few pairs of forceps, a couple syringes. All of it's too rusty to be useful though. Hey, there's a scalpel here that looks new. Scalpel that's not rusty. Seems like it was put here for a reason, huh? You think it's telling us to cut something? Yeah, I do. An operating table. You think it's old operating table look like this? I have no idea. These dolls are really kind of creepy, you know? Hey, it says something here. John. You think that's the doll's name? Maybe. This thing creepy. I wonder why it's on the bed. Are those scissors? They look kind of funny. No, that's probably a pair of kosher forceps. Surgeons use them during operations. They can hold blood vessels shut, keep tissue out of the way. They can use it to pull stuff out of small holes or something like that. Oh! Fake organ. So we took out the organ thingy out of the chest thingy. It's a lung, not an organ thingy. Huh? This part here on the back, it's all rubbery. You're right. So it's a fake organ, of course. It'd be, wait, seven, what's seven grabbing it for? It feels like there's something in here. You think we can cut out the rubber part? Can we like combine it with this? Let's try cutting this organ with the scalpel. Organ key. Another medical mannequin? From the looks of it, this one's a chick. She has a name too. Lucy. Poor thing. Looks like Miss Lucy only has a head and a left arm. Maybe we're supposed to gather all of her parts? There's some kind of device attached to the bed. It says KG on the panel. Is this a scale? What's this thing? It's got these short iron legs. Maybe it's a heater? There's nothing inside it. Fake chest. Maybe you're supposed to heat something like that gauze to kill the bacteria. There's a boiling, boiling thingy over there. There's nothing on the lid or in the drawers. A whole bunch of bottles on the shelves. They all look like medicine. We got labels, but they're all big medical words I don't understand. The drawer is empty. Yeah, nothing in there. Should be where are you going? That's the door we came through. Oh, whoops. And they're dying. Awesome. Awesome and unlocked. Alright, there's hell shit in here. 
What the fuck is this? This thing would open. Is it locked? Probably need to put in a passcode. I mean, geez, they even got a keypad on there. How much more obvious can you get? I can only enter in three numbers. E is for enter and C is for clear. Is this another hexadecimal thing? God damn it. Let's give it a shot. I mean... Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. There's a note on top of the table. Iron one, salt two, water three. Carbon dioxide, question mark, ammonia, ethanol. What do you think this is a hint for? Maybe it's got something to do with this box? Red liquid. Blue liquid. So like last time there were like all these people who knew random shit about fucking like Ice 9 and shit like that. But uh... <laughs> Salt, huh? Oh, the animation's hella good. You think Seven will shiver up when we put it on him? Hey, you say something? Junpei, there's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. How do you know it's iron? The label says F-E. F-E stands for iron, right? Okay, so Clover is the one that randomly knows, has the PRI table memorized. Hey, Junpei, there's dihydrogen monoxide on the shelf. Why don't you just say water? <laughs> What's this? Looks like a can with a spray nozzle. It says CO2. So it's a can filled with carbon dioxide. Oh, good stuff. Let's go for a drink. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says C2H50H, right? It's ethanol. That's right. It's also known as ethyl alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is. So, you gonna drink it? Nah, I won't. It might say what it says on the label, but it could be anything in there. Something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? Is it sulfur? I don't know. It's ammonia. Okay. So... Is it just this? Hold up. Science is hard, man. Hold up. Salt, two. Water, three. Carbon dioxide, ammonia, and ethanol. Okay. Well, let's look at the first line. Maybe it represents a number? I wonder what numbers go after carbon... Right, right. Do we have it in our... No, we don't. So salt is made up of one sodium atom and one... There we go. Okay. One sodium atom, one chlorine atom. Right. Okay. So it's just the number of components, I guess. Made up of... Okay. Is it just the sum of it? Wait, wait, what was this? Was this ammonia? Ammonia is four? Okay. Oops, I keep clicking on the wrong thing. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So basically, ethanol is made of two carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. Okay. So, nine, I guess, and where is the carbon dioxide? CO2, carbon, right, okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. One carbon, two oxygen, okay, so what's the order of this? Carbon dioxide, ammonia, ethanol. Carbon dioxide, ammonia, ethanol. So, three. Uh, was this one ammonia, or is this ethanol? Okay. 
This is three, nine, and what's the other one? Five? I forget. Three, four. Okay, so three, four, nine. If there was like a fucking knife that I missed in there. You think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Clover nodded and left. Junpei was about to follow her when he realized that Seven wasn't following suit. Hey Seven, what's up? Are we gonna get stuck in here? Oh well. He looked back at Junpei distractedly and then he went back down at the brown ball he held cupped in his hands. What's that? In response, Seven tossed the ball gently to Junpei. He caught it and twisted it around to read the label. Ethylene diamine tartrate. EDT. It's tartartic ethyl diamine. Ethylene diamine. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still, it looked like it's clean my. It looked like it's clean my brain now. What? Junpei looked up from the bottle. You remember something? I remember a story about E.T. It happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old E.T. crystals. They were making it to sell as industrial strength cleaner, like I told you. But... A year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the E.T. crystals, made them into some sort of mutation of the original crystal, called a hydrate. Once the crystals turned to hydrates, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals as a hydrate. They were useless, but it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere. Even ones nowhere near that factory, first American factory. They'd been making crystals the same way with the same materials, the same equipment environment, but now all of a sudden, every single crystal that formed turned into a hydrate. Is this more fucking, what is it called again, boys? What was it called? Uh, something field, morphogenic field. No factory anywhere had been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done years before, they never got a hydrate. Morphogenic field, thank you. <laughs> Morpho fucking genic field. But after it happened, at the first factory, it just spread. It was like, man. I didn't even say it. You mean it was like infected with a virus or something? Seven shook his head. No, not like that. It spread like wildfire, it showed up in labs that were completely isolated in the rest of the world. Oh, morphogenetic, my bad. Or is it morphogenic? I don't remember. Because it's been a while since I actually read that fucking. I don't know, people writing morphogenic. It even started happening to crystals that were completely sealed up. It doesn't seem like it could have been a result of the stuff coming in contact with other samples. Then, well, I guess it was some sort of morphogenic field. <laughs> like, the crystals were transmitting this morphogenic field all across the world somehow. What information? How to make a new crystal? What the fuck? Something had to tell the stuff how to do it. What the fuck is this? Like it just whispered to the EDT in the tank. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? Come on, that's just, I mean, who is this someone? Someone you can't see. Someone who exists all over the world. What the fuck is this? Or maybe the devil. What the fuck is this? As Junpei was trying to figure out what on earth he was going to say next, Clover's shrill voice pierced the room. Hey, what are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here. 
Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez. Seven looked at Jim Perry. Yeah, so anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. With that cryptic remark, he turned and left the room. Junpei was left behind to ponder what he just heard. Information being transmitted invisibly. Could such a thing really happen? Well, thinking about that crap isn't going to help me right now. Is this some allusion to the fact that we're playing the game like for the second time and in, in, our, our information is being transmitted invisibly through our next playthrough? We need to figure out how to get the hell out of here first. He took a deep breath, tried to clear his mind, and followed after seven. At least we're not locked in a fucking freezer this time. This bed doesn't look too comfortable. No hard bed. No hard bed. Maybe something will happen if we gather all of our body parts. Alright, so I've got some shit here. I guess I don't have all the body parts. It's locked. Do we have a key? Cool, it's unlocked. Ah, a piece of paper. What's this? Some kind of medical record? A cabinet with a drawer in it. Ah, what the hell are you doing? Don't you want to get out of here? But I'm tired. Four different lights, each one a different color. Red, blue, white, and purple. Does this thing react to something, then the lights light up? Are we like fucking doing science here? What the fuck is this? I found a beaker. Okay. Whoa! the thing on the right. The white light on the top is glowing, but the red, blue, and purple ones aren't lit. Huh, it won't open. It looks like it's locked. There's a red plate on it. You think that means something? It probably means something. Damn, it's not opening. Locked, of course. The blue plate here seems a little suspicious, though. Damn, it's not opening, won't even budge. It's got this purple plate on it too. Sink, this doctor's nurse has probably washed their hands here before an operation. Nothing suspicious here. It's locked, won't even budge. You think this is the exit? Is this a light switch? Hmm, doesn't seem to be working. Hmm. 
Did I open these drawers? Oh, I guess I, I guess not. And what's over here again? I'm gonna probably grab this shit. Alright, well, I guess it's time to use that, like, fucking shit I had. It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring some out on the cap? Can't see a reason why not. What is that? It's bright blue. Do you think it's alien blood? Where the hell did that come from? But what do you think it is, Seven? I don't know, some sort of special bath soap? Thicker than that. And what is it? Feeds me. Can I combine these? No. Okay. Hmm, I guess maybe we try putting in the beaker. Blue light turned on, and I hear a noise. It sounded like something unlocking. Okay. Aha! Got a leg. It's very fucking random. Okay, maybe we have everything. All right. Maybe something will happen if we gather all of our body parts. I got. What am I missing? I got both legs. I got the arm. I gotta find out the. I gotta find like the other bottles. I guess they must be lying around here somewhere. Hmm. I guess I can put the red and the blue in at the same time and get the purple. No hips. Okay. Wow, I like how animated Clover is there. Like, she has more animation than like anything else in this whole game. Pretty funny. Let's see what happens. All right, is it the hips? Let's find out what it is. Whoops. Oh, it is. Stomach. Fit for own holing. <laughs> It literally looks like just one of those torso of oil holes we saw while we were in Japan. It's pretty funny. Okay, so we've collected the six bot parts of the medical mannequin. So the ones we got must be for Lucy, right? Yeah, seems like it. Well, I say we give Lucy her parts back. Any objections? Nope. Agreed. All right, let's get this started. Combine! Oh, there's a number on here, 51. What's this? Is this the weight? Well, we're just stacking by parts on, so it makes sense to be the weight. Hey, nothing happened. That's odd. Maybe it's the wrong weight? Wait. Yeah, well, you know how there's a scale on the side of the bed? Maybe we need to get the scale to a specific number. How are we going to do that? I think we're supposed to swap her parts with John's. What? What the fuck?
I guess. The medical mannequin is lying on it. Hey, Jupiter, look at the scale. Huh? Living the scale. It opened. Now again, it must have opened because we matched John's weight to what's on the chart. Way was on a clipboard that you never checked. Word. I, <laughs> I would have checked afterwards, but I, I I was wondering if I was just supposed to get the weight to the same number, and then and then I didn't. But then it opened, and I was like, I guess. <laughs> Mashing. Looks like a light switch, but it ain't working. Hey, this is a Jupiter symbol. Wasn't this Jupiter symbol engraved in the keyhole of the other door? Other door? Door at the end of the hallway with all these rooms. You think maybe this door and that door use the same key? Maybe. Hey, hold on. What's up? Where's Clover? Huh? She was just fucking right here. Junpei turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. God damn, where the hell did she go? Ugh, alright, hold on one minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. So uh, Junpei left seven back the door and headed towards the operating room. He found her standing next to the operating table. She was staring at the mannequin. Hey Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. She didn't respond. If she hadn't been standing up and breathing, Junpei might have thought she was dead. What are you doing? Do you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? <laughs> it wasn't the best joke, but it was something, an attempt to lighten the mood. Clover didn't laugh. She stood stock still and said nothing. Hey Clover, can you hear me? Perhaps it was something he'd said, or perhaps it was something else. Suddenly her mouth opened and she whispered in a dry dead voice. My brother might be dead. Huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm gonna be next. Suddenly the operating room felt very, very cold. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but... She still didn't respond. The silence grew heavier. Let's just get out of here. We've got the key, let's use it. That cool with you? Clover nodded almost imperceptibly. Still, Junpei was glad to see she was at least somewhat responsive. He put his hand on her shoulder and guided her to the preparation room. As he arrived at the door, she suddenly stopped. I'm sorry. What was this? Why was she apologizing? Junpei wasn't sure what to make of her. Was she emotionally unstable because her brother had gone missing? I'm really sorry. Just forget everything I told you, okay? Don't worry about it. Really, I mean it. Why can't anyone pretend not to hear something like that? But something told him this wasn't the time to press the issue. Junpei gave her the warmest, kindest smile he could manage. All right. Her smile was weak. It was almost painful to watch. Damn, what the hell took you guys so long? Seven looked up as they walked back into the room, clearly irritated. You playing doctor in there or something? Maybe. Jealous? Seven avoid answering the question. <laughs> uh, they stood in front of the door. Junpei took out the Jupiter key. Alright, I'm going to open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, alright? Fine then. He slid the key into the hole. And open. He felt it unlock. Loot. The door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. Beyond it lay a simple white hallway. There was no fanfare or confetti. Obviously, there was no one to applaud them. They simply walked through the door. That was it. All right, let's get going. Hey, man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know. Can't you sound more happy? You know, get a little excited. Not really. Junpei turned away from Seven and took his first step down the simple white hallway. My brother might be dead. <laughs> I'm going to be next. Clover had told him only a few minutes before that her brother was probably dead and that she was likely to follow him. How could he pretend to be happy after hearing something like that? 
found it. Alright guys, I'm gonna stop here.